This is an important Second Amendment video. How many of you have actually thought about how we use, that's right, use firearms in the United States? This is not some hypothetical rhetorical ploy I'm about to engage in. I want to go through all the different ways that Americans use firearms. And this is mission critical for our Second Amendment rights because the Supreme Court has specifically said that Americans are entitled to own all commonly used or commonly owned firearms that are used for all, all, all lawful purposes not just shooting the gun and killing a bad guy in self-defense but all uses that are lawful and i want to make sure we have a comprehensive list and if there's something i miss on this list you've got to tell me about it so i can add it to the list hey folks i'm mark smith host of the four boxes diner proud american gun owner constitutional attorney member of the united states supreme court bar and i'm proud to say a finalist that's right folks a finalist thanks to you in two separate categories for the 2024 Gundy Awards, the top male influencer in the United States involving the Second Amendment and a top voice of the Second Amendment. Thank you for your support. I appreciate and am honored to be a finalist in both Gundy categories for 2024. All right, this is an extremely important video, not just to try to educate you, but also perhaps to get information back from you that might help the Second Amendment community protect our rights. Just as a reminder, that the U.S. Supreme Court has made it clear that the relevant Second Amendment inquiry as to why we have guns, a reason why we have guns, is uh, and how guns are protected, the types of arms that are protected in the right of the people to keep in their arms, are all guns that are commonly possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes today. Did you hear what I just said? Commonly possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes today. Now, the reason why this video is extremely important is the anti-gun movement all across this country is trying to argue that the only lawful use that counts is firing a gun. That's right, pulling the trigger and firing a gun and shooting bullets at a bad guy in self-defense. And because that rarely occurs, their argument is, well, you know, we don't have to protect any of these guns because they're not commonly used for self-defense, i.e. by pulling a trigger and shooting a bad guy, which thankfully is a rare event. In fact, the whole Second Amendment in certain respects in terms of stopping a tyrannical government, a foreign invasion, or street criminals, all of which John Locke would say if they're trying to kill you or engage in an attack on you and society, that is effectively putting you at war, whether it's against a street criminal, a gang member, a wild animal, a tyrannical government, or a foreign invading army, whatever it is, the point is John Locke, a philosopher in the 18th century, talked about how these were putting Americans or any citizen in a state of war uh, against uh, barbarians who are trying to attack forms of civilization. So the reason why all this is highly relevant about with, the, with respect to the list I'm going to give you is it's very important that we in the Second Amendment community have a comprehensive list, list of uses of firearms that are lawful, not just going bang, bang, and shooting a bad guy in self-defense, which is what the anti-gun community wants to define as a use of firearms in this country, to limit it to the number of times an American pulls a trigger to shoot a bad guy, which is extremely rare. That is the ploy of the anti-gun lobby. And that's why when you see decisions by courts that uphold, uphold, quote unquote, assault weapon bans of semi-automatic uh, rifles and the like, like AR-15s or magazine to hold more than 15 rounds, you will often see references in these decisions by anti-gun judges quoting anti-gun lobbyists to say that the use of an AR-15 or these kinds of guns is rarely used in self-defense and therefore they're not protected. But again, that's not the Supreme Court standard. The Supreme Court standard is all lawful uses and not just going bang bang and killing a bad guy. So what I did myself is I wanted to compile a list, my list of how guns are used, used lawfully in the United States. And I'm gonna go through this list orally and I'm gonna display it on the screen. And again, in the comments below, please, if you see something that I've missed or gone wrong, let me know because I uh, intend to sort of spread this list far and wide in various ways. Maybe in some articles we'll see, but I think this is a very important list and this is just a start and I think you guys know a lot more about this than I do. So this is my list and you tell me what I missed. So to begin with, these are the different ways in which a firearm may be used or can be in use in lawful ways. Now, I'm excluding from this list any military or government law enforcement use. I'm just talking about private use by private American citizens in various ways. How are they using firearms right now, right here in our country? 
First, of course, is their use of firearms for self-defense. This is an obvious one. Uh, it could be the defense of yourself. It could be the defense of your family. It could be the defense of others. It could be defending property, for example. Keep in mind, and this is key, it is sufficient. It is sufficient if the gun is kept or carried for that purpose, regardless of whether it is ever displayed or discharged. Keep in mind that the U.S. Supreme Court decision in 2016 in the Caetano versus Massachusetts case specifically said that stun guns are effectively protected under the Second Amendment as arms, even though in that case of Jamie Caetano, she never actually fired the stun gun that was at issue in that domestic violence case. So again, simply carrying the gun is using it if you're carrying it for self-defense. That's why the police officers in Times Square in New York City, when they carry their M4s or their handguns and they walk around with them, they're using those guns for self-defense and defense of others, even if they never take it out of their holster or pull the trigger. It's still being used by virtue of them carrying it. And this, of course, includes the gun on your nightstand, which is being used every single night for self-defense, even though hopefully and thankfully you rarely, if ever, have to use it in your lifetime, but it's always there like a fire extinguisher or a life insurance policy or an auto insurance policy. You hope you never have to use it, but it, you may need to, and you're still using it every day, which is why you have to pay premiums every year on your insurance policies, even if you don't put in a claim. Now, of course, there's other things that we can use firearms in the United States. That includes private armed security, private detectives, and the like. These, again, are other types of uses of, of firearms legal in the United States. Let us continue on. There's obviously the possibility, and I think this remains uh, the case, as I wrote about in my book, uh, uh, Disarmed, about how what the Ukraine war can teach Americans about the right to bear arms. We know that civilian resistance against domestic tyranny or oppression, foreign invasion or terrorism, these all can play a role. There's the apocryphal quote by uh, you know, Admiral Yamamoto at, at, at World War II, I believe. Uh, it was you know, the Hammer of the Emperor. I always forget which one uh, allegedly said this. Uh, but obviously you can never invade the United States in World War II because there was a rifle behind every blade of grass. And I think that's even more so true today than it was in the, 40, in the 1940s. So so again, merely having an armed citizenry is enough in many instances to uh, deter ahead of time a foreign invasion or domestic tyranny because people realize there's only so many people they can put on a cattle car before other people are going to stop being put on the cattle car and going to do something about it. So they might be able to put me on a cattle car. They might be able to put you on a cattle car. But after they do that a couple times, I suspect other people in the Second Amendment and American community are going to understand what's going on and they may conduct themselves differently than lining up and walking onto the cattle car. Again, one never knows exactly how things play out in the real world, but the purpose of the firearms and an armed citizenry is to give people the option and opportunity, if you will, to possibly fight back. Doesn't mean it will always succeed, but at least it gives them an option that they would not otherwise have. And it's a very helpful option, obviously, which is why it's in the Second Amendment Bill of Rights in the Constitution. The next uh, uh, use of firearms in the United States, of course, is hunting. This could be all sorts of hunting, everything from big game, small game, varmints, birds, uh, trophy hunting, or simply for food. All of these types of hunting are used throughout the United States. And by the way, not just with modern firearms, keep in mind that black powder muskets, or I should say black powder rifles and black powder weapons are used for hunting as well. They have black powder hunting season all across the United States. Uh, this is important for various pending Supreme Court, I should say pending court cases that are out there, which we'll talk more about in the future. But keep in mind that hunting is not just done with modern firearms and modern ammunition, but also with black powder uh, firearms and ammunition as well. Again, we'll get to why that's important uh, in future videos. And of course, there's protection against animal attacks. I think I wrote the definitive article uh, about this. I'll put the link to it down below in the Southern Illinois University Law Review, uh, SIU Law Review. You should check it out, <clears throat> going through the history of the Founding Fathers and animal attacks and the use of firearms for protecting oneself against these animal attacks. A very important use for firearms in the United States even today. In addition to animal attacks, we also have organized shooting competitions. There's too numerous to list, and I'm, I hate to say that I've never actually been involved in an organized shooting competition. I wish I had the time. I wish I could do it. Uh, but I never have. Um, this is the way it is and the, and the way life works. Uh, but there's bullseye competitions. There's practical shooting. There's the IPSC, right? The IPSC or the International Practical Shooting Confederation, which is the IPSC 
uh, oh, oh, you know, uh, competitions. You have the United States Practical Shooting Association, the USPSA. Of course, you have fast draw competitions. These, there's the Camp Perry National Matches. You have the Police Pistol Combat PPC competitions. Uh, you know, we, obviously we have the Civilian Marksmanship Program that's still out there for a lot of the youngsters, among others. So you have all these, again, uses of firearms lawfully for organized shooting competitions, of which I've just named a few. Then, of course, we have sporting clays. They can be formal sporting clays or informal. you got three gun, three gun competitions, which is using the smarter, modern sporting rifle, which is really an AR-15 style firearm, uh, semi-automatic rifle. you got shotguns and handguns as part of those three gun competitions. You have bowling pin matches, steel target matches. You've got long range shooting competitions involving, let's say, precision rifle series, PR, PRS, uh, the Olympic shooting sports. Uh, you have informal shooting. Of course, people like to plank and just shoot in the backyard or go to the field and practice. And of course, don't forget, you have firearms training. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals has specifically said that under the Second Amendment, we have a right to train with firearms in the famous Azel case. Uh, and don't forget the Azel case involving firearms training. And of course, practicing with firearms, firearms training is a lawful use in the United States. Obviously, you also have law enforcement by civilians. This includes civilians who might be deputized into service or for protection against rioters. It's not unusual for, for citizens to sometimes be deputized uh, as reservists or whatever to help protect their town, especially towns uh, that are very you know wide ranging and a lot of geographical area to cover and not a lot of police presence. So that is not unusual in rural parts of America to deputize, deputize civilians for helping to protect Americans using firearms and other use of firearms in the country. But let's go on beyond that. Uh, this is one of my favorites, even though I've never done this either, is you have historical shooting activities. You have reenactments such as Civil War reenactors. You have Revolutionary War reenactments. Uh, these are all using types of firearms, and replica firearms and the like. Of course, if you always keep in mind, I always mention that the one uh, NFL team you all should be pay attention to if you're in the gun community is keep in mind that every single time the New England Patriots Patriots football team scores a touchdown or a field goal, the Patriots militia, the Patriots militia in their Revolutionary War garb fires off their muskets and their shots right there on the field at Gillette Stadium every time the New England Patriots score a point. So if you're not familiar with the Patriot militia in New England, check them out at the New England Patriots Stadium uh, when they uh, when the Patriots play games. The Patriots militia kind of fun. Again, another example of reenactment in a different context and lawful use of firearms. We also have cowboy action shooting. This obviously uses a lot of guns and replicas from the Old West period. And let's continue on. There's other uses of firearms that maybe just don't get recognized that we need to keep in mind because again the reason why this list is important is legally the supreme court has says that we're entitled to all commonly used firearms that are in common use for all lawful purposes not just for self-defense all lawful purposes so the more uses and lawful purposes we can identify and flag for the courts and others the better it is as i see it for the second amendment community because again the Anti-gunners want to narrowly define it as how many times you use a gun to shoot a bad guy in self-defense. Those are the only times you can protect a gun, but of course those are very rare, which gives the anti-gun community, so they think, an opportunity to ban lots of guns and to cut back on our rights. And that's why we want to do the opposite, which is to really identify as many uses including those that don't involve going bang, bang against the bad guy, is possible because it protects our rights. So let's carry on some other uses, lawful uses of firearms in the United States today. We obviously have firearms collecting and our restoration of guns, including things like gunsmithing. I always wanted to be a gunsmith, but of course, I don't think I'm capable of that. But that's a whole other thing. People like to do gunsmithing in their homes or otherwise, or even professionally. And of course, a lot of people like to make their firearms. Uh, this could be contemporary firearms or historical. Sometimes you can use weapon parts kits or kits. Maybe you could do 3D printing. I know there's competitions of 3D printed guns in places like Florida. Very exciting. It looks like that'd be fun to go to. Uh, but again, making firearms is another lawful use of firearms in the United States. Then, of course, we have firearms experimentation and improvement, including new designs, new cartridges, new chamber chambering. Uh, sometimes this is called wildcatting. Uh, you have customization of firearms. People like to do all sorts of cool things with their guns. Uh, I see that on YouTube all the time. Uh, so again, you have firearms experimentation and improvement taking place all across the country as part of the do-it-yourself movement. And people like to tinker. This is kind of the American way of life, always has been. Uh, tinkers often give rise to great industries. It does happen. Uh, we saw that certainly in Silicon Valley back in the day with the rise of the computer industry, just as one simple example. Then, of course, we have ornamentation or decoration of firearms. It's not unusual for firearms to be used as wall hangers or 
to uh, you know put up on a wall above a mantle display. I've seen you know sometimes I watch other political pundits on TV. By the way, the reason why I'm in a suit is I just had to do a Fox News appearance, so I'm in a suit because of that. That's why I'm in a suit today. Uh, but again, there are people that will go on TV and they will have firearms in the background when they do political punditry. Not super unusual. Again, another use of firearms, which is the display or the artwork of customized guns or just the display and artwork of guns in and of themselves. Another lawful use and lawful purposes of firearms in the United States. And last but not least, of course, you have pest control, coyotes, feral hogs, prairie dogs, rats, groundhogs, crows, etc., etc. Uh, you know, these kinds of pests that are out there that one has to control for, especially if you grow crops uh, or you have, you know, various animals in the backyard or whatever it is. You just want to keep your land safe from pests, environments that may bring disease or other problems associated uh, with their presence into your backyard or into your home or neighborhood. Again, another lawful use of firearms, which is pest control. So there you have it. That was the list I was able to come up with over the last few days. I, I want to let you let me know if I missed anything or I screwed something up. I really appreciate that uh, because I hope to get this list out there and circulated among various people in the Second Amendment community because I think this is very important because, again, uh, the anti-gun is trying to get courts and judges to ignore all these uses I just articulated for the reasons why I've explained. And again, because the Supreme Court has said that the relevant Second Amendment inquiry is whether uh, firearms are commonly possessed or arms are commonly possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes today... That's the language of Judge Alito in the Caetano case, by the way. We want to identify as many possible lawful purposes as we possibly can to help protect our rights to keep and bear arms all across this great nation. So there you have it. All right, folks, look forward to talking to you in the comments down below. And uh, we'll see you again soon here at the Fur Boxes. Darn it. Don't forget to subscribe and resubscribe if you subscribe before so you don't get knocked off the list. Uh, feel free to share this video with your friends and share it all over the Internet. I really want a lot of input on this particular video. This is very important to get this video out there. Uh, so I get feedback. And again, uh, don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner. And we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.